Hi, welcome to one of our online services from Harrogate Elam Church. We bid you welcome, especially those of you who are in our church fellowship. Not long now till we'll be able to meet again in person and we will be seeing you soon on Pentecost Sunday. But I just want to also bid an extra special welcome to anyone who is picking this up. You may not be part of our fellowship, anyone who may just be picking these videos up here or there. Or perhaps this is your first time coming across us completely. Whoever you are, wherever you are. I just want to pray God's blessing onto your life. I just pray that in the next few moments together in our service, you receive the encouragement you need. You receive the, the blessing, the change in perspective. Whatever is missing in your life today, whatever you are lacking, I just pray that the God of heaven reaches out to you in the next few moments and touches your mind and touches your heart and lets you know that he is with you and that he is at work in your life. That is my prayer for you for the rest of our time together. Amen. In a couple of moments we will hand over to our worship team and we'll take a few a few moments and just glorify God. And then I'm going to just share something from the scriptures. After that we'll have another visit from the, the virtual Sunday school gang. But before that let me just pray. Father, we just thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you for your wonderful love and power in our lives, God. We thank you, Jesus, that we can live these redeemed lives, God, where so many of us lived lost, lived half-lives, lived lives that were self-serving and self-seeking, but, God, that was ultimately unfulfilling. We thank you that we have found rest in you, that we have found passion in you God that we have found fulfillment and satisfaction in your calling Father just pray for our time together and the week beyond that God Father just pray that you meet the needs of your people this morning speak to us God educate us reach out to us lift us up encourage us rebuke us God do whatever you need to do in each and every one of us either corporately or individually God, we give you this time, so let your will be done. Amen.
let me start by asking you a question. What do you do when you feel as though you're coming under attack? What do you do when you feel as though trouble is starting to climb over your walls? This is a question that Nehemiah had to answer for himself in a very real way. You see, about 70 years after the Babylonian Empire invaded Judah and took the captives away, 70 odd years later, the been released are starting to come back, but the city of Jerusalem has been left a ruin. The gates have been burnt down with fire and the walls that encircle the city to keep it safe have been destroyed and broken down in certain parts. And it's Nehemiah's job to rebuild those walls. He's got a limited workforce. But the biggest problem he has is that there are still enemies who live in the land who do not want the people of Judah to return. And they want to stop the walls being complete. They know that once the walls are built, then Jerusalem will be secure. And they're trying to frustrate the work. And these enemies could attack at any minute. So what does Nehemiah do to guard himself and the people to make sure the work continues? What he does is he splits his workforce into two and he gets half the people to become the builders and they work on the wall and they repair the broken bits of the wall and the other half who used to be the builders are now the bodyguards. They become the standing army and they stand and they watch the backs of the builders who are repairing the wall. This is how he divided up his workforce. But there was another person that we read about in Nehemiah chapter 4. One other single person who was absolutely key to this entire strategy working. Don't know his name, but I'm just going to call him the guy with the trumpet. Let me read from Nehemiah 4, 18 and 20. Each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked, but the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. Then I said to the nobles, the officials and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out and we are widely separated from each other on this wall. So wherever you hear the sound of a trumpet, join us there and there our God will fight for us. You see, because the walls were so massive, the workforce, the bodyguards, the army, they weren't all, they weren't all stood in one place ready to defend. They were spread out in a thin line all the way around the walls, all the way around the city. So if the enemy did attack, all the enemy would have to do is throw its full force against one weakened part of the wall and the army of enemies would probably be able to overcome them and they would be inside the city before the rest of the fighters, the rest of the warriors and the builders even knew what was happening. So Nehemiah had a trumpet guy and the trumpet guy basically had one job his job was if ever there was an attack he was to run towards the attack and blow the trumpet and that would be a signal to everyone else who was working on the wall and they would all run towards the sound of the trumpet and there they would make their stand and there Nehemiah says that God would fight for them Without the blowing of the trumpet, the people of God would have been overrun before they even knew the enemy was inside the walls. I asked you at the beginning what you do when you come under attack, what you do when trouble tries to climb over your walls. My message through this morning is this. When you come under attack, blow your trumpet. When you come under attack, blow your trumpet. And there are three ways in typical preacher fashion. There are three ways in which I would like to share with you this morning that you can blow your trumpet. The first way that we blow our trumpet is in a very natural way. It is by asking other people for help. By asking for help. When Nehemiah's trumpet guy blew the trumpet, he was calling for help. He was calling for reinforcements. And 
And I don't know who you are, but just as I've been thinking about this and praying about this, I really just get the sense that there is someone listening to this today and you need to hear, you need to be told that it is okay to be a Christian who asks for help. It is okay to ask for help, be it from a friend, from a doctor, from a professional. It is okay to be a follower of Jesus who asks for help. The reason I'm saying that is because there is among some believers a mindset that it is not okay to ask for help. There are some who would say that when you're a follower of Jesus, we we need not have weakness. We should not have problems in our life. And if we do, that it shows a lack of faith and a lack of trust in who God is. I don't know if you've ever come across this type of mindset before but the type of mindset that says if someone if if someone has sickness then that's probably related to sinfulness if someone has um mental illness and depression then that is a sign that there's probably a lack of faith they don't have the f they don't have the faith to rebuke it if someone is sick and poor and miserable then it is probably their own fault they've done something and there's something wrong in their life and that's the way they are. You may not think like that, but there are some people who think like that, and there is this mindset that that tries to tie our problems with personal failure. And because of that, a lot of Christians don't feel that they can ask for help. It's a bit of an over-realised eschatology, but the truth of the matter is we're not in paradise yet. We are living in between we are living in between what Jesus started at his first coming and what he will finish at his second coming. We are not in paradise yet. And Jesus said, in this life, in this world, you will have trouble. So if you've got trouble right now, don't worry about it. That's normal. And if you do have trouble, blow your trumpet and ask for help. It is okay to ask for help. It is okay to call for reinforcements. Moses asked Aaron for help. David asked Jonathan. The disciples in the boat who had the, the miraculous catch of fish. Do you remember they caught so many fish that their nets started to break and their boat started to sink? What did they do? They called the other disciples who were in the other boat and asked them for help. And they had to be rescued in the middle of a miracle. In the middle of a miracle, with Jesus standing on the beach watching, the disciples had to be rescued by the other disciples. And that's okay. It is okay to ask for help. And part of the beautiful thing that we see in Nehemiah's battle strategy here is that while half the people were building, the other half were watching their back. And it's such a picture of the church. We are called to be at work, partnering with God, building his kingdom. But while we do so, we watch one another's backs. We are there to support each other, to defend each other, to lift one another up in the spiritual and in the physical. All of us, all of us Christians are the reinforcements. And all of us need to blow the trumpet and call upon the reinforcements from time to time. So when trouble comes over your walls, blow your trumpet and ask for help. The other way that I want to encourage you to blow your trumpet is in worship. Time and time again in the Bible, the blowing of the trumpet is a declaration of Worship the blue trumpets in the temple, the blue trumpets as they marched into battle. Even the angels in heaven blow trumpets to the glory of God. In Numbers 10, we read that Moses had two silver trumpets made. God told them to have these trumpets made, and whenever they were blown twice, all the people would gather at the tent of meeting where the presence of God would be. 
and they were commanded to blow these trumpets when they went into battle and they were commanded to blow these trumpets when they offered sacrifices during the festivals as a reminder of who God is. Numbers 10.10 10, as a reminder of who God is. That is why the people of Israel blew trumpets so much and that's why we blow the trumpets of worship to, to remind us of who God is. Worship may not change your situation, but it will change your attitude towards that situation. Worship may not make your problem go away, but it will remind you of who God is and that God is better suited to deal with your problem than you are. Nehemiah said, when you hear the trumpet blast, run towards it and there God will fight for you. God hasn't called us to run away from the problems of life. He's called us to run towards them in worship because it is when we are in a place of worship that we are most likely to let God fight for us. So when you're feeling depressed, worship. When you're feeling anxious, worship. When you're feeling vulnerable and attacked and lonely and overwhelmed, worship. Isaiah 61 3 says the Lord will give us a garment of praise for a spirit of despair. It's an exchange, it's a swap, it's a trade. When we put on the garment of praise, when we when we begin to worship and, and put on that garment of praise, the spirit of despair is lifted off. So the next time you have trouble, the next time you are under Attack, blow your trumpet, fight your battles with worship. Hallelujah. And the final way that I will encourage you to blow your trumpet is by speaking in tongues. Just like prayer and worship and fasting, speaking in tongues is a powerful weapon that God has given us and when we feel like we are under attack when we feel trouble coming along praying in tongues should always be the believers go to response and and there's a couple of reasons for that that I'll just share first of all one very practical reason is that when when we are in a crisis when we come under attack when we have trouble we do not always know the correct thing to pray for Quite often we, we, we experience trouble and our first prayer is God remove this trouble. God take this suffering away. But it's very likely that the will of God in that moment is not to remove our suffering but to give us the strength that we need to overcome it. So when we pray to God to remove the problem, God doesn't do it. He doesn't answer that prayer and we then feel disillusioned we wonder where is God in this situation and it blocks us and prevents us from going on and actually praying the more mature prayers that we ought to be praying but the powerful thing about praying in tongues is that it gives a voice to the Holy Spirit who is interceding for us anyway look at what Romans eight twenty six says we do not know what we ought to pray but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans verse 27 and he searches our hearts and knows them and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God we do not always know what we should be praying for but the spirit of God knows the will of God and is already interceding on our behalf therefore when we pray in the spirit and when we begin to pray in tongues we are beginning to partner with the prayers of the holy spirit and we are moving closer and closer to praying something that is in line with the will of god and when we pray in line with the will of god god moves in power hallelujah and the other reason that we should always be speaking in tongues is because it builds us up. Just like Nehemiah's builders 
built up and strengthened the broken parts of the wall, so too does speaking in tongues build up and, and fortify the believer. 1 Corinthians 14, 4, if anyone speaks in tongues, they build themselves up. Jude 1, 20, keep on building yourself up by praying in the Spirit. Speaking in tongues builds us up spiritually. It is as if you are revving up your spirit's engine. It, it helps us to, in, in moments, draw closer to God. It strengthens us. It makes us bolder. It changes our attitude. It changes our perspective. It opens us up to the Spirit's presence and the Spirit's voice in our life. And if that's not reason enough to be speaking in tongues more, let's not forget that God moves in mighty power when we pray in the Spirit and when we pray in accordance with His will. Is it any wonder then that Paul said, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you? Paul knew the value of this gift that he'd been given and he knew how much he needed it in his life. So he spoke in tongues as much as he could. And so should you. So that's my message today. When the enemy attacks you, when trouble starts to come over your walls, blow your trumpet. And by blowing your trumpet, I mean ask for help and call in the, the reinforcements. I mean remind yourself of who God is by worshipping him and build yourself up, fortify your own spirit by beginning to speak in tongues. You do these things, you will soon find yourself making your stand against the enemy with a very different mindset. And let me just finish by repeating what Nehemiah told the people to begin with. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. For there, God will fight for you. Remember, we blow the trumpet. We are the ones who make our stand. But it is God who will fight for us in the end. Amen.